Alright, welcome to this video. This is Emmanuel Kadri and in this video we're going to be having some other examples um, regarding the if, elif and else, involving the if, elif and else statements. Okay, so let's see how it goes this time around. But then I'm going to make use of the input statements to, to just uh, explain, just play around a few things. So we need to collect to receive values from the user, all right? And then we are going to make use of the input statements to play this game. So let's say in this, um, the first example is going to be number game, okay? All right? So let's see how it goes. Um, input statement, uh, as we know, we first assign value. Let's call it number, okay? And then let's say, let's use input. Um, Maybe I just want to receive some values between 0 to 10. So let's say, let's tell the user to enter any number between 0. Okay, let's say enter any number from 0 to 10. Enter any number from 0 to 10. Okay, good. So the user enters a number and it gets saved in the memory as number. All right, so what do we now do with whatever is it that the user enters? Let's provide conditions. Let's say, if the number entered, okay, is greater, is the number entered is less than 10. If the number entered is less than 10, so you put this column and then press the return key, that is the enter key on your keyboard. All right, so it goes to the next line, indented. And then you tell Python what to display, or what to do. So let's see, let's tell Python to say, you have entered um, the number, you have entered number, then you put a number and you put a space so that whatever results will just appear after the space okay so you have entered number then you put a space so whatever the user enters appears after the space if this first condition is met and then still under the same if statement then remember you can use single or double quotes doesn't matter what when it matters is when you are having either the single quote or the double quote inside the text itself that you, um, you are trying to type, okay? So if you have a single quote in the text you are typing, then you put double quotes outside to indicate that everything in the text is a string. If you have double quotes in the text you are trying to type, okay, then you can use the single quotes outside to let Python know that, that it is, it is um, part of the string. All right, so I was a bit distracted. Then now, let's see. So what are you saying? Um, just tell Python the next thing to do. Say the number, let me see. Let's see number, put a comma. Okay, say is less than 10. All right, good. So now the next thing, now, the next thing is you pass the next condition. Just say elif. That is to say otherwise, okay, if number entered is um, equal to 10, if the number entered is equal to 10, all right, you tell Python what to do. So just say print, print, it says you have entered number. So let me just repeat everything here. Okay, good. And then you enter it, so it goes in the next indent. Then you say print um, number, that is the variable that accepts whatever is it that the person entered 
appears to Python as number since you assigned the variable number to, to the input statement. So when this variable stores anything the user enters, it stores it as number. So anytime Python says number, 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 it sees it as whatever the user enters. Okay? So which means whatever the user enters, okay, is, sorry, it's going to be in quotes, is less, is um, equal to 10. Okay. Mm. Just anything you like could be used. Anything, if you think something is be, um, something better is supposed to be there, no problem. All right, so else. You can just put it, you know that this else statement doesn't have a condition. It only tells you the way out. Like it only tells you, okay, the final resolve of whatever is it, if none of the conditions earlier listed is um, satisfied. All right, but um, we could also do something like this. Mm, okay, maybe maybe in the next example. All right, so you can just say else. You say else prints. You have um, you can just say else prints. You can use single or double quotes. You know, I told you that before. You have entered an invalid. Well, let me just say. This input is invalid. This input is invalid. OK, good. So let's run the program. Let's run the program and see what happens next. So let's run it. As usual, it's going to prompt you. Uh oh, what happened? Um, Sorry, I want to check where the error came from. File other examples dot par. Okay, line nine. Okay, this is line nine. Elif number. Okay, sorry. I used the single equal to. It's supposed to be double. I'm very sorry about that. So just the elif number is double. Double equal to, not a single equal to. Remember, I told you earlier that when you are using comparison. Okay, so when you are trying to compare um, two entities, okay, you don't use single equal to. Single equal to is used to assign values to a variable, but double equal to is used to compare values on both sides. So please pardon me, I made a mistake. It's always allowed anyway. Mistake is part of it, it's part of programming. It's not a sin. Mistake is not a sin in programming. So if you make any mistake, be proud of yourself. It just gives you another opportunity to learn better. And uh, it just shows that you are getting it better, okay? So mistake is part of programming. Don't, just, don't get discouraged by it. And then don't get pissed when even someone instructing you makes mistake. It's something that keeps happening all through your programming life. So it's a normal thing. But um, what is good is that whenever any error arises, okay, the ability to quickly detect where it comes from, that makes you a very good programmer, okay? So, and one of the ways in which you can detect error um, easily is to read the, the error statement. So, when you read the error statements, it gives you an idea of what the error is all about and where the error came from. See, now it says it's indicated line 9. It specified the file, the name that I used to store the, um, to, the, 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 to, to save the, this current um, project. Okay, this current um, um, code. I saved it with other examples, okay, and so it shows me, it tells me the file exactly that I'm dealing with and the line of that file where the mistake came from, which is line 9, so it is part of it. So, and it actually did the favor of pointing to where the thing came from using this kappa sign, which is perfect. So immediately I go to my line 9, I checked and I saw, and I, and I, I will, say, I will just go to my line nine and check and see that, okay, fine, this is it, this is it, and then I correct it. So that's what I just did earlier. So I've corrected it to double equality. Okay, then we can move. So by the time we run this program, so it asks you to enter any value from 0 to 10. So I'm going to tease this, this stuff a little bit, okay, but I'll do that later. So let's just see what happens with each entry. So let me enter any value less than 10, so like 7. Then by the time you press the Enter key, so it tells you, oh, oh another error. It says um, on line 6, OK, 
Okay. If the variable I enter is less than 10. Okay, good. There is a problem here. The, the next problem is that I, um, I did not cast it into, into an integer because I'm dealing with number. Okay, so Python saw it as a string. And so it gave Python an issue. Like, okay, what is happening here? Okay, so it says if number, it says type error not supported between instance. They said less than is not supported between instances of string and integer. So which means that it is actually expecting you to cast this thing into an integer, at least to, for it to work or cast it into any numeric stuff, okay? Um, also like float. So, um, because I told you earlier that whatever is it that comes from the input statement comes out as a string. So if you want it to perform numeric functions, then you have to cast it into a numeric integer, in a numeric um, variable, or numeric value rather. So I'm going to put it in a numeric data type, which is integer, open a bracket, and then you close the bracket. So now I'm sure that whatever is it that is coming out from this place, according to what the user enters, will be changed or will be converted to an integer before it gets stored as number, as, as whatever is it I put here as the variable name. Okay, so that is exactly what's going to happen now. So I'm very sure it's not going to give us error again. Pardon the error, but it's all part of it. I'm even having fun um, teaching you about error. So it's still like unplanned part of the class to teach you about error and how to interpret it. So enjoy. Now let's run the program again. And then I'm very sure that this time around it's going to be fine. So we put seven and then you enter it. So it runs fine. It says you have entered number seven. Okay, I didn't complete this. You have entered number, then you put comma and number. Okay, so it's just one of those things that happen when you're working in a distracted environment. Well, it's, it's still part of it, so just enjoy it, enjoy it. All right, me, I'm having fun here. And the person that is distracting me is just behind me here laughing at me. So when you run this program, then you have zero, enter any number from zero to 10. So let's say you enter the number seven, and then you push enter, it says you have entered number seven. Okay, you see that? So because I, I put it here that prints you have entered number, number. Okay, and then you said, so this number is whatever is it that you entered earlier. Okay, so, which is the variable. So it sees as seven, and then you say you have entered number seven, then it goes to the next line. Because the thing that you entered is truly less than 10, it will ignore the remaining ones, okay? It will only run this part and ignore the rest. So it runs this part and ignore the rest and then ignores the rest and say, okay, fine, I'm satisfied. The value is truly less than seven. So it should just focus on these two lines and end the program there, okay? So it says enter any value. Then you have entered number seven. Seven is less than 10, just according to what you put here, that number is less than 10 and it works fine, no problem, okay? So let's have another case whereby, let's give it a try again. We're gonna run it again. At this time around, you want to, okay, oh, sorry, let me stop it. I'm going to do the same here, enter number, number. Okay. And then I could also repeat it here. And uh, like this, let's say sorry. This input is invalid. Okay. All right, so by the time you run it, okay, let's see. So let's put a number that is exactly equal to 10 and see what happens. So 10 is equal to 10. So you run it, it says you have entered number 10. 10 is equal to 10. All right, so. You can even put some fun stuff there. You put great job or something, okay? Just, just make it exciting in your own way. So let's see, let's see what, it, what, what happens here. So I'm gonna change this thing, I wanna say, okay, great job. Great job, okay. Um, let me put this here, copy. And I'm going to just replace it. Okay, then, but I'm not going to put it here because it's not a great job here. Mm. Because an invalid input here. So for the third, for the last term, um, 
resolving uh, results. It's, 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 it's the last result will come up when you put something that is not between 0 to 10. Okay? So, and then um, something that is not 0, any number from 0 to 10, if you put it there, that is when this third one will work. So if you enter anything less than 10, this second part will work. Um, this first part works. If you enter something exactly equal to 10, then this part works. If you enter something that is not any number which from 0 to 10, then that is when this resolving, this result statement works. So let's see how it runs. So by the time you run the program, so now this time around we are going to enter, we know we've tried it with a number that is exactly equal to 10. So let's enter any number that is not 10, not from, from 0 to 10. So let's say we enter 200. And then it says you have entered 200. Sorry, this input is invalid. And it's that simple. So most of the kind of prompts that you see, similar prompts that you see, when you are filling a form online or when you're doing one thing or the other, um, or when you're working on your system and uh, or anything whatever that involves you um, putting in some data values. And then the system will prompt something on the screen for you to tell you that, bro, you have done something wrong here and all that. So it is... It is with this kind of thing that um, such prompts come up, you understand. So that's how it works. It's interesting, right? Okay, so let's do see what we can do. Let's assume um, we run this program and um, we just put something that is not a number. Let's, let me put text. Emmanuel is going to return an error, okay, because Emmanuel is a string. Okay, and you cannot use string for numeric comparison. It's not going to work. All right, so um, that is it. Okay, so I'm sure you've learned something now. Um, or you just, you might want us to play one more game. Um, okay, let's play just one more game. Let's assume that, um, let me just create something here. Okay. Let's use um, fruits. Let's say fruits is equal to. Um, so since we are working with strings, we expect fruits to be strings, okay? So since fruits is equal to um, imputes, open bracket, and say. Enter any of the following. Enter any of the following fruits. Um, I just I want to. I want a line break. Uh, backslash n. I want a line break so that whatever is it that continues next, you know, after this, we will we'll follow. We we'll, we we'll continue on the next line. Okay, and but it's still part of the, it's still part of the input prompt, which just continue on the next line. Okay, then enter any of the following fruits. I might decide to continue still on this straight line. It will still work on the next line when you run it. But um, I, I just for clarity, I just want to continue on the next line. Okay, just for clarity. Okay, so but even if I continue on the same line, by the time you run the program it will still come, it will appear in the next line. Whatever is it that follows this text will appear in the next line because you have instructed it to do so using this backlash n. Backlash n means new line, okay? So you want whatever is it that you type afterwards to appear on a new line. That is what you're telling in Python. That is on display, let this thing appear on a new line. That's what this means. So whether I decide to continue my typing on a new line or not, even if I continue typing on this same line, it will still work, okay? But just for clarity and also for my screen to be effectively captured, so I decide to continue on the next line. So let's see what happens here. Now, you see, you enter um, any of the following fruits. Uh, let's see, I'm going to use double quotes. Apple, because I want it to appear exactly like that. Apple, comma, mm, um, Lemon, comma, uh, bananas, comma, 
and um, um, let's say um, coconuts. Okay, good. Enter any of the following fruits. It's just a game. Okay, so, all right, so we've designed a prompt. Um, um, and then on the next line, we provide the conditions. Okay, if whatever is it that you put there as um, fruits, let me remove the letter S. Okay, if fruit is equal to, remember double equal to, right? If fruit is equal to apple, then you provide a condition. And you say, okay, sorry, you put um, a column and then it's in that sense for you. So if fruit is equal to apple, you say fruit you say print, sorry. You say print. Fruit is um, a comma, then you put fruit. Whatever is it that was entered will appear there as fruit. Okay? So you say fruit is, I put these three dots, it's all good. Um, Okay, let me put it this way. Let me put it this way. Fruits, you say fruits. Um, okay, yeah. Then you put um, column here. Fruit is. Green. Let's just, you know, just a game. You can give it, I just wish to um, put color. All right, okay, so I, I just wish to use color instead of anything else. Just say fruit is green. It's, you know, I know we have green apples, red apples, but okay, we just, this is just an example. So I prefer to go for the green apples in this example. So I'm, pre I'm, I'm, I'm like assuming all apples are green, okay? So then you go to the next line and then provide an alternative statement and say, and say elif, elif, um, you provide the next condition. Elif fruit is equal to, which means whatever is it that the person puts, if it is lemon, okay, and then you, you provide the condition, okay, sorry, the the semi, the colon, then it's in, it gets indented, then you provide the next condition. So the next condition is to, for it to display fruit, that is fruit as a variable, okay, and then please, this comma to very important. The fruit, you open this string. Fruit is, let's say lemons are green. Okay, I know we have yellow lemon, but it's fine. Then here, I'm providing a third condition. I'm just using this example to show you that you can repeat elif, you can repeat elifs, you know, as much as, as much as you want. You can repeat elif as much as you want, okay? Then, so you have another one. You said elif fruits, okay, um, is double equal to. This time around, we are dealing with bananas. Okay, um, right is fine. And then you put this, and then you say print, print um, fruits, comma, is, um, let's say we have the yellow ones, okay, fine. And then, if it is none of this, okay, let's, then you can do another elif again. Another elif, fruits, just watch me here. Fruit equals, um, this time around, we want to do coconuts, right? So you put the string, C-O-C-O-N-U-T. All right, um, and then this, okay? Then you say print, you open the bracket and say fruit, open this, is coconut brown, okay? All right, do it. 
But if it is none of any of these things, if it is none of any of these things, then just tell um, the just tell Python what to do. So you just say else. That is, if it is none of all the above, just say else. Um, put a message there, like. You have entered the wrong word or oh, miss misspelled a fruit. Okay, you have entered the wrong the wrong fruit or oh, misspelled a fruit, like a fruit among the list. Okay? Good. So let's see what happens. Now, I'm just to make this one run, I'm going to, I'm just going to cut, um, comment out this. Please just ignore the background sound. I'm recording from home, and there is noise everywhere. Just focus on me. Thank you. And then um, you have um, just put the three stuff and then. It takes out all of that line. So nothing is going to run here now from the above. So the program is just going to focus on this part alone. So let's run it and see what happens. If there be any error, we correct it. All right, so please enter any of the following fruits. OK. OK, no problem. Let me just continue it exactly like this, the way it wants it. Then maybe from the next one, I just do it this way. Let me see, because I just want every, I want the screen to contain everything because of the recording. So let's just see if it works that way. If it doesn't work, then I will have to leave everything on a single line. Okay. I have to put everything on a single line. Although if I didn't do that, if I did not include the new line, that um, backslash n, okay, it would have worked fine, I'm sure. I mean, even putting the remaining part of it to the next line would have worked. Or probably it's just something that was not permitted by this environment I'm using at the moment, okay? So it could happen that way too. All right, just, um, now I've decided to put everything on a single line, so let's run the program. If there is no errors, then it's gonna work fine. So it says, please enter any of the following fruits. Please enter any of the following fruits. Because of this new line stuff that I put here, this backslash n, okay, so every other thing I typed after it fell on a new line. So that's how it works, okay? So you're not gonna put any space between it and the following stuff. You're just gonna type it that way exactly. Just um, type it, but if you put space, the space will as well appear. Um, in the run, when you see, you see that I've just put a space, I see that this thing, you know, there is a space of um, one character. Okay, so that's how it works, but I'm just, just gonna put it back. Stop it and let's run it again. So enter any of the following fruits, apple, lemon, bananas, coconut. Mind you, if you are entering any value here, you must type it exactly the way um, it appeared because Python is, Python is very case sensitive. It's very case sensitive. Um, I'm gonna correct something here. I think I used green twice, and I didn't want to do that. Okay, so let me use red apples. Red apples, okay, good. Apple is red, lemon is green, bananas yellow, and um, coconut brown. So let's run it again. Stop it, and then you run it. Okay, enter any of the following fruits. So please mind you, that um, all of these values, um, whatever reason you want to enter, has to be exactly the same spelling as it was specified. Or, uh, you know, because that is what was used in the conditions, okay? If you type anything apart that is ordered from what is typed here in the condition, it will return an error, or it will let you know that you have typed the wrong thing, or according to the instruction you gave it in the last line, so you have entered the wrong fruit or misspelled a fruit. Okay, so let's put the value that we, it wants us to put now, so no, that we want to put rather. So let's choose Apple. So if I say Apple and I press the Enter key, 
it says apple is red. Okay? So that's how it works. Um, if I run this program again, and I say um, lemon, lemon, and I run it, say lemon is green. See that? So if I run the program again, and I choose bananas, and um, it says bananas is yellow. So running the program again, and I impute coconuts. It says coconut is brown. You see that? So you can you see that we used multiple ellipses and everything was still fine. Now, now if I make a mistake, let me see if I if I choose to type any of the apple, any of the fruits in a way that is not the way it was programmed. Let's see what happens. So small letter A, P P L E. By the time you run it, see you have entered the wrong fruit or misspelled the fruits. You see that even though it's the same apple, but because I use a small letter to start it and then you know it's it affected it okay so that's it so similarly if i run any fruit that is not any of these four it will still return that same um you know prompt with the else statements so let's say i entered um i entered something like uh, orange Okay, and then it says you have entered the wrong fruit or misspelled a fruit. So that's it. So the else statement just gives you um, okay, a final result if none of all these conditions stated above um, worked. Okay, so that is how it is. I'm sure you have learned um, a lot already. And um, I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.